Hi, my name is Alan Durant and I'm an author of children's books. I write books for children of all ages, right through from picture books up to young adult fiction. Today I'm going to read my most recent picture book and I'm going to give you a clue about what this story is. I don't know if you know what these are. Let's take one out. These are porcupine quills. These sharp things, they're very sharp actually. And this story I'm going to read you is about a porcupine, a porcupine called Noko. And the story is based on a very famous traditional story called Stone Soup. And this is my version <coughs> called Quill Soup. <coughs> and it is illustrated by the amazing South African artist Dale Blankenau. So here we have the end papers with the end sheets. More introductory pages. <clears throat> the copyright page with all the legal information and the title page. Quill Soup. Noko the porcupine was hungry and tired. He'd been travelling through the valley of a thousand hills and hadn't eaten for days. He saw a small village ahead and his spirits lifted. Food and shelter at last, he thought. Meanwhile, in the village, the animals caught sight of Noko. <gasps> There's someone coming, shouted Monkey. Quick, run to your houses, squeaked Meerkat. Noko trudged into the village. It was silent and empty. Hello, friends, he called. There was no reply. Noko went to the first house and tapped on the door. Yes, said Warthog. I've travelled a long way and I'm very hungry, said Noko. Do you have anything I can eat? Warthog shook her big head. We well, had a big lunch, she said, and all my food is gone. Noko knocked at the next house. How can I help? asked Rabbit. Please, I need some food, said Noko. <gasps> so do I, Rabbit exclaimed. My greedy, dear greedy brother came to visit and ate all my food. I have nothing left. Hmm. <clears throat> Noko knocked at Monkey's door. Yes, what is it? Monkey asked. I wonder if you have any food to spare a poor traveller? Noko inquired. Hm. We are poor villagers, Monkey grumbled. We don't have any food to spare. Hmm. Noko went to Aardvark's house. And Meerkat's house. Pangolin's house. But he came away empty. None of them, they said, had any food. By this time, Noko was tired and very hungry indeed. But his brain was as sharp as the quills on his back. He could see from the villagers' sleek coats and their rounded bellies, that they had food. But how was he to get some? He sat and he thought. And he thought. And he thought. And at last he came up with a plan. I wonder if you could give me some fire and a pot of water, he asked. Of course, the villagers replied. They couldn't refuse him that. 
Noko, put the pot on the fire to boil. It seems I shall have to make my own food, he sighed. I shall make quill soup. He plucked three quills from his back. And he dropped them in the pot of water. But surely the quills are too hard and sharp to eat, Warthog said. Ah, wait and see. Soon they will soften and release their flavour to make a delicious soup, Loco explained. He bent over the pot and he dipped in his paw. Then he licked it and nodded. Mmm, tasty, he said. Just how his majesty likes it. You met the king, squeaked Meerkat. Oh, yes, many times, said Noko casually. I always make him quill soup. He loves it. Noko tasted the soup again. Ooh, if only I had some carrots, he said ruefully. Rabbit's ears shot up. He wanted to taste quill soup that was fit for a king. or two, he blurted, and he hopped away to fetch them. Noko added the carrots to the water and tasted the soup again. Oh, lovely, he announced. Of course, the king likes mealies in his quill soup. squeaked Me Meerkat, and she ran away to find them. Each time that Noko tasted the soup, mm, there was something that needed to be added. Beans, peas, potatoes, spinach. In moments, as if by magic, all these things appeared. Now Noko's soup was thick and rich. Once again he tasted it. Mm, perfect, he declared. Unless, I don't suppose anyone has a few worms. And Pangolin did. Noko told the villagers to fetch their bowls. There's plenty of soup to share, he said. And share they did. They drank bowl after bowl of the delicious soup and in the firelight until the big pot was empty. Noko sat back, looked up at the stars and yawned. I wonder if you might have a hole where I could sleep, he asked. Oh, cried Monkey, for our friend who has cooked delicious quill soup for the king and who has the generosity to share it with strangers, piped Meerkat. No, my friend, said Monkey, you, Noko, shall have the very best bed in my house. You're too kind, said Noko. Before they went to their beds, Noko and the villagers sang together, shared stories and danced in the moonlight. And later, with a full tummy and a happy heart, Noko, the traveller, went to sleep at last.
Good night. Soup, soup, lovely quill soup. Eat it in the kitchen or eat it on the stoop. With carrots and potatoes and spinach too. Delicious quill soup for me and for you.